It's revival time again from the Deeper Life Bible Church. Healing and health, deliverance and dominion are the children's bread. And if you are not yet a child of God through the new birth, you can become one and get healed and delivered as you listen to these exciting testimonies, powerful preaching, and partake in the prayer session that cannot be overlooked in the cuts of heaven. You will never be the same again. Happy listening and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. My name is uh, Brother A.G. Udogbo. I'm from this abyss in the Onipan district. Uh, my testimony goes like this. Uh, before ever I give the testimony of what the Lord has done that brought me here this evening, I want to testify of how I was saved. It happened that I was a wretched sinner. And at least the sort of sin I commit was not only one fold, was double fold of persecution and also of uh, every other type of sin you can name. Then on, in 1988, the Lord saved me after hearing the message. Then at least I prayed forward and hearing the message of sanctification. Then the Lord sanctified me in August 1989. Then in the December retreat of that same year, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Uh, the very reason that brought me here this evening is uh, something to do with uh, the examination, which the Lord helped me to pass. In fact, I started writing the exam in November 88. Then it's a professional examination. Uh, the Lord has been so faithful that he has been carrying me through each time I reach each I write each part of the examination. Now it so happened that on the last part, that is the final part, that as I was just at least uh, going in for the examination, I developed a uh, sickness. Just about two weeks to the examination, I had a swollen uh, chin and everything. I couldn't open my mouth like this. I could not even read. I cannot revise. I couldn't do anything at all. Then I just console my wo- myself with one word, that. The race is not to the swift, neither is the battle to the strong. That even if I should have to read the whole of the book, then it may not even come out. But I thank God that on Saturday, preceding the examination that was to start on Tuesday, then I recovered. Praise the Lord. As I recovered, I said, now it is late. I can't do anything. I can't read anything because it is so voluminous that I couldn't do anything. But I only console myself in the Lord that... I have to at least uh, forgo everything and continue praying. I went for the examination. In the examination room, the, at least uh, the, my calculator got spoiled. It was just the grace of God that touched another person to give me an extra uh, calculator. But praise be to the Lord who has at least given us all good things in the name of Jesus. That last week as the examination was re- released, the result was released. I came out uh, qualifying as one of the candidates. Praise the Lord. And at least I want to really at least strengthen your faith that whatsoever is applied, that at least you just wait upon the Lord, your own success is coming. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you today. We bless your name. We glorify you because of who you are, because you remain ever the same from generation to generation, from age to age, time to time, from day to day. You remain ever the same, the same in love, the same in power, the same in ability to change anything that needs to be changed, to recreate anything that needs to be recreated. At the beginning of this world, you manifest your power. And you operated in divine ability. And with just a single sentence, let there be light, there was light. 
and let there be this or that and there was. Because there is nothing that can resist your power. And the Bible tells us that you are still the same. You change not. And there is nothing that can resist your power. Satan cannot resist your power. Demons cannot resist your power. Human devilish agents cannot resist your power. Circumstances cannot resist your power. With you, all things are possible. At all times, in all places, for everyone. Therefore, Lord, we come with that confidence of faith tonight. Believing that there is no problem, there is no difficulty, there is no mountain in our lives which you cannot remove. We trust in you. We have confidence in you. That when we became the children of God, then we came into inheritance of the goodness of the Lord. We came into the inheritance of the great promises we have made to the saints from generation past even until now. Therefore, Lord, we are very expectant today in faith believing and knowing that you are going to accomplish very much in our lives. Lord, I'm looking up to you. That in my brothers and sisters and in their friends and neighbors who are here tonight, you will make a definite change. And they will never be the same again. Lord, I pray you will give your gift to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that as we look into the word of God, Faith will rise up like a giant in the heart of everyone hearing. Because it says, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. This word will never lose its power. The promises of God will never lose its power. And faith will never lose the dynamic ability to make a change in the life of anyone and everyone. Therefore, Lord, I pray today, the, the worship of today, the service of today, the revival hour of today, will be visited by your signs and wonders in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We thank the Lord who has led us thus far. We praise the name of the Lord for all that he has been doing. I want to tell you that from some weeks now, I've been very concerned for the condition of each of us. I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm going to intensify my prayers on your behalf too. And that is why I've taken time in all these few weeks to treat deliverance from demonic powers, from demonic attacks. And you know, these last two weeks, I devoted to praying and fasting. One, I spoke about fasting by an individual. And I told you the power that is released, the authority that is manifested, the great divine ability that moves in on your behalf when you fast and pray. Then I told you last week of the corporate praying and fasting, what it does, what it accomplishes in our lives. I'm only pleading with you that we will not be hearers of the word only, but will be doers of the word. Remember? All the things I shared with you, what praying and fasting can do in our lives and the change it can make today, I want to talk to you and not only talk, I'm also going to pray with you at the end of this message. And I'm believing that as a result of the meeting tonight and as a result of our praying together in faith, a series of happenings, a series of signs and wonders, a series of miraculous manifestations of the power of God will begin in your life and continue in your life in Jesus' name. I really believe it. I believe that you are going to plug into the power of God and your life is going to be changed. And circumstances will change to assist your life and make you go in the direction that you ought to go. I believe tears are going to be wiped away. I believe that the money we have been spending on sicknesses, I believe that we are going to cut down that money. I believe that health is going to come in the place of sickness. I believe that the joy of the Lord is going to flow. And the fullness of the joy of the Lord is going to be revealed and manifested in our lives. I believe that the joy of worship, it's going to be so radiant and people are going to see that we really belong unto the Lord. 
tonight and talking to you on changing destiny through faith. Changing destiny through faith. Before I look at the scriptures with you, I want you to understand whatever is negative in your life now can be changed through faith. Your own faith, our faith together as I pray with you and believe God with you, whatever has become like a bottleneck, a crossroad, an unsolvable problem, so to say, and it appears that it's an uncrossable river, I believe that faith is going to make a change. You see, faith is a wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. And I encourage you that you always develop your faith. And I know your faith is going to be developed. There is little faith. There is growing faith. There is living faith. There is great faith. And the kind of great faith that is able to get anything from the Lord. And we're going to arrive at that. And we're going to pray together at the end of this message. And I want you with expectation. Looking forward to that time. With joy, assurance in your heart. Knowing that this day is the day the Lord has made for you. You are going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm talking to you as I said. Changing destiny. Through faith. And you see, there are people that will see their destiny. They will see the negative things in their lives. And they will say, well, that's my law. That's my faith. That means I'm going to carry that thing all through life. But my brother, my sister, it doesn't need to be so. You don't need to carry a problem all through life. You don't need to be retarded all through life. You don't need to stand by a mountain and be looking at that mountain, watching that mountain, crying because of that mountain all through life. This thing will change. This mountain will be removed. Amen. This sickness will have to go. Amen. Impossibilities will have to bend and bow before you. And all the hindrances will have to clear out of the way that you, the child of the king, the son, the daughter of the king, may pass on triumphantly. Now, you know, in the Bible, many things are said about faith. But then, I'm going to show you examples of people that actually changed their circumstances and situations. And they changed everything by their faith in God, and it became something positive, powerful. Let me just uh, go through with you the things that I want you to think about. Number one, changing. From sorrow to joy. Number two, changing from barrenness to motherhood. Number three, changing from sickness to health. Number four, changing from damnation unto life. Number five, changing from bondage unto freedom. Number six, changing from storm to calmness. Number seven, Changing from the gate of hell to the gate of heaven. Now think about this. As you look at all those seven things I've told you now, about the changes that can take place, and that all these changes can take place by faith, faith alone in God. And you can have that faith, you can possess that faith, and I know by the grace of God, I have faith. And I'm going to use that faith together with you, on your behalf. Because, you know, we are together. We are members of the same family together. You are my brother. Why should you suffer and I wouldn't feel it? Or you are my sister. Why should you suffer and I wouldn't share any suffering? We are going to remove this sin by faith together. Whatever little faith you have or great faith you have will be joined to the faith I have. You know what the Bible says? One shall put a thousand to flight. And the two of us can put ten thousand to flight. It may be there are many mountains, many problems, many enemies, many difficulties. The two of us can do it together. And we can have the victory together. And we will. Let's look at First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. From verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. 
And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. What are you requesting for today? God granted him that which he requested. What is your prayer list? Your prayer requests. God granted him that which he requested. Let's go back to verse 9. This is the man that changed his sorrow unto joy. We're told that he was born in sorrow. With sorrow. Because I bear him with sorrow. Therefore the mother gave him that name. The name of the father is not mentioned. And there is no remembrance of the father in particular here. All that we hear about is the mother. Why? Was there a problem between father and mother? Was there a rejection between this son and the father? Well, one thing we know. That this person was born in unfavorable circumstances. Think about that. Of favorable circumstances and that could mean a lot for different people for some people the mother was pregnant at a time that uh, marriage had not been concluded and therefore the father may not want to accept the child and the child is born always saying who is my father where is my father what's the name of my father sorrow of heart because the father could not be identified other people are born into the family that has a curse upon that family. The curse upon other children and a curse upon virtually everyone in that family. What sorrow? Other people are born with a kind of sickness and deformity. And because of that, every time you see them, you see that deformity and that sickness. Now, here, every time they call the name Jabez, all the people that called that name and knew the original meaning of that name, they knew that it meant sorrow. And Jabez always remembered that. And the same thing might have happened to you. The people had seen that cause even around you or upon you. Or that deformity upon you. And yet, Jabez changed all that. And he became more honorable than his brethren. His life became actually better. Because he could pray and he prayed in faith. We're told in verse 10, Jabez called on the God of Israel. No priest to help him. No preacher to counsel him. No intercessor to pray for him. And no brother prayer partner to pray with him. And yet he said, even though I may not have counselor or intercessor, yet I will pray. Think about yourself. You have coordinators. You can have prayer partners. You can have Christian friends. You have a Bible. You have God. You have Jesus, Savior and Lord. You have pastor too. And therefore, if Jabez all alone can call on the God of Israel and make a change, I believe you can. And I know you will. What prayer did he pray? He said, oh, that the Lord will bless me indeed. He said, remove this curse, replace it with blessing. That should be your prayer. He said, remove this sorrow, shame, and suffering, and replace it with blessing. That should be your prayer. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Then he said, and enlarge my coast. What does that mean? Uh, it means different things for different people. For the person who feels that his life is choked up, and he feels that he is restricted and confined into a little place. He can pray, Oh Lord, give me liberty. So that you enlarge my cause. It can mean another thing for a person who is a Christian. And who sees that the area of his influence is very small. And he cannot really be the salt of the earth. The light of the world. It's not having the victory that will influence many other people. He can pray, Oh Lord, change my spiritual life. Enlarge my cause. For a trader who does not have many customers and therefore is not making progress in the business, he can pray, enlarge my course. 
for a person in the place of work who has been confined to a particular office in the lower cadre all the time and there is no promotion, there is no progress. He can pray a large micros for a family. Marriage, but no child. And uh, even though they are living happily together, but you know the family is so small, because there is no child, he can pray a large micros for a person who is witnessing, who is preaching the gospel. But then he is not able to really extend the hand of gospel message unto many people. And the people he witnesses to, they are very, very small. He can say, oh Lord, I want to do more. I want to touch more lives. Enlarge my cause. That's how Jabez prayed and God answered. And that thine hand might be with me. If you connect that with the New Testament, that the hand of the Lord was with them in the church. And many signs and wonders were done, were wrought by the hands of the apostles. When the hand of the Lord comes upon you, signs and wonders will be the regular manifestation in your life that the hand of the Lord might be with you. You know, in the dead of the night, if the hand of the Lord is with you, anybody who is sick in the community, that person will get healed. If the hand of the Lord is with you, anywhere you go, enemies will fall before you and they will turn to friends. If the hand of the Lord is with you, the hand that upholds this universe. If that hand is with you, Every shakeable sin or everything that is shaking and trembling will be stabilized and established in your life. How I pray that the hand of the mighty one will be with you. And thou wouldest keep me from the evil. Brothers and sisters, there's a lot of evil in the world. In fact, we are told in Galatians, this present evil world. But do you know, no matter how many evil doers are in the world, no matter how many devils are in the world. And no matter how much mischief is done in the world. Evil here, evil there. Until many people are feeling that life is not secure. The Lord can keep you from evil and from the evil one. Then it says that it might not grieve me. And the last part of that sentence says, And God granted him that which he requested. I believe tonight the Lord is going to grant you your request. It doesn't matter how large the request, how many the requests, how deep the requests, how spiritual the request, or how physical the request. God is going to grant you the request of your heart today in Jesus' name. Amen. Believe it and look forward to the time of the end of the message when we pray in faith. Dynamic faith that cannot be denied. You will get something, you have to get something. Before you get home tonight, and you will see the hand of the Lord with you. Let me go to point two. Uh, change from barrenness to motherhood. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Well, let me just explain this to you. This woman had been praying. Remember again, no partner, no helper. The husband of Anna had accepted that problem as a permanent problem. He had, she, he had accepted that the destiny of Anna was fixed. And therefore she didn't, he didn't even worry to stay with Anna and pray with Anna. Because he believed that, well, Anna will never be able to have any child. And he used to comfort Anna saying, never mind about it. Never worry about it. I love you all the same. And he will give Anna a double portion whenever she, he was distributing things to the family. But then over here, Anna alone tarried in prayer. Tarried in prayer. She wept. She spoke to the Lord. Out of the anguish and the agony of the heart, she spoke unto the Lord. Brought her soul before the Lord. And then Eli challenged her. Then she replied, Eli. And then Eli said, Go in peace. And she he said, the God of Israel, grant thee thy petition. What does it mean? The God of Israel. Do you know what that means? 
the God that preserved Israel in Egypt. In the midst of all the powerful, mighty enemies that wanted to destroy them, that same God honor you and give you, grant you your request. That God, mighty in all, the God of Israel, that was able to give child unto Sarah, that same God who has not changed in might and power, grant thee thy request. That God that opened the Red Sea, and the children of Israel walked over on dry ground. That same God, grant thee thy request. The God who filled all the field that was clean last night without any grain of manna. Before they woke up in the morning and he filled all that place with manna, that God that can do marvelous things like that, grant thee all thy request. The God that brought water out of the dry rock. Now they may tell you that that uh, place is dry. No child will ever come out of that place but the God of Israel that brought water out of the dry rock and said that he could even bring honey out of the dry rock if the Israelites will believe him. That same God grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. Can I remind you of that word grace? Grace unmerited. God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at his own expense. May God grant me the grace in thy sight. The favor undeserved. And you see over here, Anna did not burn any candle, burn any incense, give any sacrifice. See, even in the Old Testament, when they needed a lamb, when they needed sacrifice, when they needed a lot of a lot of rituals and ceremonies, yet Anna did not do any of those things and said, Let me find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. What is that? Oh, she now believed. Sorrow had gone. She was now expectant with joy. Let me tell you something here. Let me tell you something. Note it down in your notebook. She was first of all pregnant with faith before she became pregnant with the child. Filled with faith. Saturated with faith. Did you hear that? She was pregnant with joy. And with the peace of God. The joy of God. The peace of God. The faith of God filled her. Saturated her. That was in preparation for being pregnant with the child Samuel. If you today, while you are here, as we pray together, you are pregnant with faith. Pregnant with the peace of God. Pregnant with the joy of the Lord. And you are totally saturated with faith and joy. You will discover then the real pregnancy of the child will follow and will come. By faith, she changed from barrenness unto motherhood. Now, changing from sickness to health. It's in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Reading from verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. We're talking about a woman who had had issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things. Of many physicians, she had visited many doctors, and yet she could not be healed. Then she heard of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith cometh by hearing. Not hearing about Satan. Faith cometh about hearing, not hearing about paths of darkness. Faith cometh by hearing, not hearing about how people died in their sicknesses and they were never healed. Faith cometh by hearing, not hearing about doubts, but faith cometh about hearing, hearing the word of God. And Jesus is the living word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh. And it dwelt among us. And we beheld its glory. Why don't you just look at the glory of Christ? Why don't you look at the power of Christ? Why don't you look at the things that Christ did that no other man ever did? Why don't you look at the relationship, the intimacy of Christ with the Father? Why don't you look at the authority of the name of Jesus Christ? 
Why don't you look at the glory of Jesus? How the evil spirit, demonic spirit, they fell down before him. She heard of Jesus. When you hear about Jesus, and you behold the glory of Jesus, faith will rise up like a giant in your heart. And you will say, everything is possible. No crying anymore. No sorrow anymore. No doubts anymore. Because you have faith in God. She heard of Jesus. What did she hear? Oh, I'm sure she must have had testimonies of what Jesus had been doing. She must have heard of the healing virtue passing through the Lord Jesus Christ unto people. She must have, she must have heard how Jesus by a single command will drive out evil spirits. She must have heard how Jesus Christ will just make the storm to come into a calm. She heard of Jesus. And when she heard, she came. And you know something? What she heard made her to want to come pushed her to come, inspired her to come. When you hear the word of God, and it is out of that word, you are pushed to the Lord, driven to the Lord, and you are propelled unto the Lord, almost uncontrollably, that there is an eagerness within you, saying, from all these things I've heard about Jesus Christ, I am going to get to him. And I know that something is going to happen. She came behind in the press, and she touched the garment of Jesus, saying, if I just touch... Not that I pull it. If I just touch, not that he speaks to me. If I just touch, not that I even open my mouth. Do you see how powerful faith can silently work without the person even manifesting the faith, the faith talking too much? And then she touched. And immediately, the Bible says straightway, immediately, the fountain of her blood dried up. And she felt in her body. She experienced something. Something was manifested. And she knew it. She experienced in her body that she had been healed, made whole of that plague. Faith can change your sickness to hell. Number four, it can change damnation and make you have life eternal. In John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Reading from verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, has everlasting life, and shall not come into damnation or condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Passed from death unto life. You see, here we see the Lord Jesus Christ. And here he tells us that if you only believe, your sins can be taken away. The punishment of sin can be taken away. That nation, condemnation, the guilt that has been upon your life can be taken away. The peace of God can come in. You can have eternal life. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, all it takes is you turn away from your sin. You repent of the evil you have been doing. You confess unto the Lord who you are as a sinner. And then the blood of Jesus will flow in your life and cleanse you. And turn you from a sinner to a saint. Change your life. The moment you believe on the Lord, the... Uh, man said, that's the Philippian jailer, what shall I do? That I will be saved. What must I do? And he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And you can be changed. From being a sinner to being a saint. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now number five, from bondage unto freedom. We're looking at Luke chapter 13. Verse 11. And behold... There was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. Twelve. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Notice here, the woman did not go to Jesus, but Jesus came unto her. Do you know Christ has come to you tonight? In that place where you are, as you are hearing the voice, the sound of the voice now, do you know the Lord has come to you where you are? And he wants to change that bondage and set you free. The thing had been there for 18 years, but then what can't the Lord do? He can remove mountains, can remove lumps, can remove blindness, 
can remove paralysis, can remove bondage, can remove that uh, this condition of bending over. And it can remove all demonic oppressions and all the demonic uh, power in your life. What can't he do? He can do all things. He laid hands on him and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. A change came. Let's look at Mark chapter 4 from verse 37 all through to verse 40. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the sheep that, so that it was now full and it was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are ye so fearful how is it ye have no faith you know the story here. Jesus changed the stormy situation into complete calmness by faith. He just stood up and he said, Peace be still. Why was it done so quickly? Oh, because Jesus Christ spoke with authority, with divine ability. He was there at the beginning with the Father. When the Father said, Let there be light, and there was light. And he operated on that same level. He knew that there was power, authority, divine ability in the words that he spoke. He said the same thing today. Christ has never lost any part of his power and authority. And he lives within you. He lives within me. And as we command, and as we say, peace be still, the storm in your family can come into calmness. The storm of your life can come into complete calmness just by believing in the Lord and will speak the word of faith to that situation. Luke chapter 23, verses 42 and 43. Luke 23, verses 42 and 43. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Wasn't that man right at the gate of hell? Just a few steps to hell fire. Just a few, a short moment, and if this had not taken place, he would have gone to hell. That's why I say that even faith can change the situation of a person from the gate of hell, from the brink of hell, and get that person right into heaven, to the gates of heaven. And Jesus said to this man who believed on him, right on the cross, he said, today, you will be with me in paradise. I want to tell you, anything and everything can be changed by our faith in God. I'm sure you believe God today. I believe God with you too. And I know that as we pray together, your life will be changed. If you are a sinner, God will turn you to become a saint. And if uh, there is any sickness in your life, any mountain in your life, any problem in your life, any difficulty in your life, God can roll that stone away and you become a free man, a free woman. Faith in the promises of God. The promises that will never change. And we cannot be disappointed because we are believing in Him. If you can only believe, and pray in faith. Things that need to be changed will be changed, can be changed in your life. That's what Jesus told that man that had a child, that had the demonic spirit that will fall to the river and then at another time will fall into the water, fall into the fire. Jesus said, if you can only believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I believe you are believing tonight. And as we are going to pray together, we'll challenge all those problems and remove all those problems, you'll see the manifestation of the power of God in your life. Let's rise up on our feet and let's pray. And I want you to talk to the Lord in prayer. If there is sin in your life, why don't you talk to the Lord about it? Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary so that you will 
be completely free from your sin. You feel condemned. You feel guilt. You feel that you are not a child of God. You know your sin has separated you from God. Your faith in Christ can make a change. That your guilt, your condemnation will be removed. And you will become a true child of God. And the blood of Jesus Christ can wash you whiter than snow. If you will just call upon the name of the Lord, turn away from your sin and say, Lord, I believe, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. Do it now. Do it now. Surrender your life unto the Lord and the change will come. Have assurance that whosoever comes to the Lord, the Lord will in no wise return. You tell the Lord, I want to be a child of God. I want all my sins to be removed. And believe the Lord, and it will be done right now. In Jesus' name we pray as i said before we're going to pray together but i want us to settle this to start with that you can pass from death unto life from damnation unto life everlasting from guilt unto peace with god if you will believe on the lord jesus christ right now if you've never done it before or if you are misleading and you have broken your relationship with the Lord, we can pray together. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name because you have told us and assured us that whosoever shall call out the name of the Lord shall be saved. And these have called upon you, wanting to be forgiven, wanting their lives to change, wanting their condemnation to be removed and the punishment perdition waiting for them to be totally removed so that they do not come into damnation anymore. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you forgive them and that you turn them around, that they will become your children even now in Jesus' name. Lord, let your hand be upon them. Thank you because we know you have answered. Cleanse them from all their sins for the blood that Jesus shed for every one of us. We pray that they will have the assurance within them that now they are your own children. Give them the victory to live a victorious Christian life righteously even from this moment in Jesus' name. The things they've been doing before, which are not acceptable in your sight, I pray you give them the power to overcome all those things in their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now, if you have any problem, we're going to pray. And I want you to be very, very expectant. I told you earlier that if you can only believe in God, circumstances will change. Your situation will change. Sicknesses will drop out of your life. You'll become healed. You'll become healthy. And impossibilities will become possible. Take this to be a special moment in your life. When we together challenge your problem, confront your problem, and then we bring solution from the Lord unto you. And that situation will be touched by the Lord and changed by the Lord. Let's pray. I want you to just bow your head and close your eyes. 
a person that has pain all over the body and makes you so weak that if you walk a little distance or do a little thing, it's appearing, it's like you almost pass out, almost collapse. If you raise up your hand and just touch yourself, we'll be praying together and the Lord is going to heal you. And you're going to come back with a testimony. Amen. Quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I thank you because I know you are a great God. Amen. Lord, I thank you because you have spotted out this individual because you want to remove the problem. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will touch him right now. Touch her right now. And this pain all over the body. I pray that you will remove it. And the healing will come instantaneously now in Jesus' name. Yeah. The strength, vigor, will come into the body. And what they are not able to do before, they will be able to do in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for the healing. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. The person that has been coughing out blood, if you will raise up your hand now, the Lord will deliver you and he will set you free. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are a great God. And Lord, I pray that this coughing out of blood will stop in this person's life in Jesus' name. I pray that you destroy the works of the devil and you set this individual free. And Lord, whatever it is and whatever is the root cause, remove it by your mighty power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. That individual that it appears that you do not have uh, blood running very well in the body. And you become dizzy in the head. And it appears that uh, sometimes uh, you will fall down. And things uh, will not be stay stable while you are looking at them. If you will raise up your hand, I will be praying for you. And God is going to heal and deliver you. Almighty God, how we thank you. Because you have not changed. Because your power remains the same today. I pray, oh Lord, that your power will be encountered in the lives of these people. And that dizziness and weakness will get away from them in Jesus' name. Amen. And you deliver them, every one of them, right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The woman there that has the flowing blood is your blood. He will raise up your hand and be very expectant in faith. The Lord assures me that he will heal you. Amen. That is your blood will be gone from your life. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you. We bless your name. We thank you because you have given us your promise. And we know those promises will never fail. Amen. Therefore, Lord, I pray that that issue of blood will stop right now. Amen. I pray, O oh Lord, that complete healing, instantaneous healing will come. And as this person gets back home and looks at that place, I pray that the change would have taken place completely in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. There's somebody over there that uh, somebody went away from home and you've been looking for that individual, you've not found the individual. As we pray together now, and we bring this situation to the Lord in prayer, believing God together, I believe that individual will come back. I want you to come to the church and tell us how it has happened, when it has happened. Just raise up your hand. I will ask the Holy Spirit to search out that individual, bring that individual back home. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are looking up to you. And I pray that that individual that has been away from home, and they have been looking for him or her, and they do not know the whereabouts. I pray, Lord, that the Spirit of God will draw him, draw her back home now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Do it, O Lord. Thank you, because we know you have answered. And we have received that person back home. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now, I want you to lay your hand upon yourself. Whatever is the problem, whatever the sickness may be, whatever the difficulty may be, just lay your hand upon yourself and we'll pray more. And believe God. That the hand of the Lord will be with you. He will keep you from evil. Change your circumstances. And things will never be the same anymore. Believe. Father, we thank you because we are a good God. We thank you because we can call upon you. We thank you because with you all things are possible. 
Therefore, Lord, I bring all these people before you right now. And I pray, oh Lord, you touch them. And you remove all their problems in Jesus' name. Amen. That person has that pile, I command right now, that pile will be healed. And all that thing coming out of that place will not come out anymore. Your healing hand will be upon that individual right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray for this uh, sister that's always having the problem during the particular period in her life that the stomach problem will be unbearable. Therefore, Lord, I pray you regulate everything in life, change everything in life, so that that pain will not be in that place at that moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Lord, I'm asking for this person that has the swelling in that uh, private part of the body they call an ear. Therefore, Lord, I pray you touch that an ear. And the person that has been finding difficulty in breathing because of the ear, remove this sin in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for this person that has terrible oppression. That seems to be oppressing you down at night and you try to shout, you cannot. You try to uh, deliver yourself or get up, you cannot. Until you feel so helpless and so powerless. Oh Lord, I pray. Those evil forces, those evil powers will be driven away from these people in Jesus' name. Amen. That person has found something walking all over your body. And it inconveniences you. Lord, I pray that you remove it by your mighty power. Right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, oh Lord, for this person that has an uh, ear problem. And I pray that that problem in the ear, you will remove. That noise in the ear, you will remove. And the hindrance of hearing very well, you will remove from that ear in Jesus' name. Amen. The person that is having blood coming out of the nose, Lord, I pray, you touch her right now. And that sin will be removed by your mighty power in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I'm asking that all the heat in the body of that individual, and sometimes you have to put towel in the water and mop all your body because of wanting to get the heat down. Lord, I pray that you will touch this individual right now and complete healing, total deliverance and freedom will come upon this individual in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray for this a fellow uh, on the left hand side of the preacher standing here. Lord, I pray the death that this person is owing. And it's not able to even remain properly uh, at home because of, um, because of the death. Oh Lord, I pray that you make provision for this individual. And the death will be paid in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I pray for that person over there with uh, the case in the court. And I pray that by your mighty power, you'll put a smile in his mouth. Amen. And Lord, at the next hearing, this person will be uh, set free and the right thing will be judged in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, Lord, for those who are having problems with their landlord. And I pray that in your mighty way, you'll make provision. And there will be peace in the home, in the places where they're living in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a trader there that has uh, somebody spent uh, money on you. And uh, that money that they gave you, uh, it's with an evil intention. And it takes all your money away, all the money you are making in that trade. Lord, I break that evil power. I destroy that evil power. And I pray that you set that individual free and all the uh, holes in their pockets and their paws. You mend everything from this moment in Jesus' name. That person that he told you in the village that you should come and do a particular sacrifice. And because you refuse to do that sacrifice, then it appears that they were cursing you. And you are now living in fear in your life. Lord, I break that fear. And I break that bondage. And all the things they said in that place, I turn everything into blessing in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that as they lay their hands upon themselves, you'll be with them. And I pray that you do definite things in their lives in Jesus' name. That Lord, as they go back home, the manifestation of their miracles, the manifestation of their deliverance, the manifestation of their healing, the manifestation of their provision and prosperity, will be upon them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Thank you for what you have done. And we know that as your people are going home, they will see the glory, the goodness of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.
I believe you have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them. Lord, 
Lord, I want to be another Elijah, yeah. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power mighty in the blood, in the blood. In the blood, there is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power.